idea. Yeah, come on. Not quite as big, but a little bigger than what I have had. Let's get side. Hi, uh, it's Constant Angler. We're here uh, fishing for wrasse again. Uh, I'm just going to start off with the Texas rig. Fishing in area I know. Usually the Texas rig is best. It's not overly weedy in this particular spot on this particular mark. So, for you beginners there, there's a weight, there's a bead, we tie a weedless hook on the end. So I'll just get a weedless hook and show you that. do is tie that on and there is a size 1 out with a five turn grin or not one two three four missed it five a little bit of spit pull down tight chop the tag end and when you're chopping your tag end don't chop it too close because there's less chance of it pulling through if you, if you don't. And as you can see there, hopefully you can focus on that. You can see the sort of length I leave it. It shouldn't pull through anyway, but it's a handy little tip. It can happen. Good tug. All right. Well, so we got players here. Uh, crush the barbs. It makes unhooking grass so much easier doesn't leave, leave, uh, leave such a hole in their mouth either and they won't come off if you keep them under tension to be honest if I lose the old grass because I'm fishing barbless I'm not worried about that I don't seem to so then we're going to Texas rig this bait as always there is a video all about Texas rigs on my channel it's one of the older videos but Search it, and you will find. Oop. All rigged and ready to go. It's that quick, that simple. You can tie up before you go if you want. I very often forget. But it doesn't take long anyway, does it? So what I did then when I cast was I trapped the line to stop getting wind knots before it hit the water but I also thought I'd landed just over the edge of, a ro of the rocks and it would sink straight down onto the rocks so I sunk it on a tight line so it sw swung in towards me as it sunk thereby avoiding the rocks uh, we've got a pintail lure on this morning my banker lure to start with and I'm just shaking the bait in place and pausing in between Here, fishy fishies. Oh, that's a bite. Right here. Yeah, come on. Just dead sticking that. Only a little one, but it's a start. All right, I'll come round here and get it. Yeah, no problem. Got a bite in then. It's a confidence one, isn't it? <laughs> Get the net sorted. There we go. Didn't feel much of that because the camera's at the wrong angle. Oh, a little bit of a rock pool here. Oh, nice little ass. 
not big. Bent the rod all the same. Yeah, it's a bit more the size of what you were getting the other day. Not quite as big, but a little bigger than what I have had. That's a good size. That was right in against the rocks in here, this side. Um, that's definitely something I notice when there's colour. It's happening too often now for it not to be something, I think. When it's a little bit of colour in the water, they seem to hug the rock face. It's almost like it's a little bit lumpy. <sighs> Let's release this fish. Make a pig's ear of this one. He's trying to dive for the bottom. <laughs> There's a little bit of colour in the water. There's only a little bit here today. But I find the, the fish hug the structure even more. So they might be right under your feet. I naturally would expect them to be further out sort of avoiding the swell, hitting the side of the rock face, that kind of thing, but it doesn't seem to work like that. They, they seem to feel safer against the structure. Yeah, 99 times out of 100, a big wrasse will really smack your bait. And uh, on the initial hit, and what they generally do, unless you're swimming a bait, in which case they will chase, is uh, stun the bait. And then you've got to stop yourself from striking. What you're looking to do is, after that initial stun, is pause and wait for the next hit. If your rod tip pulls around then, and strike. If not, wait for the third, and on the third, generally, your rod tip will pull around. If it hasn't by then, give it a twitch. Move your bait a little, not too much, because it's, it's near that fish anyway and strike at the next whatever or it puts the ball tip round or not and, uh, so you can see over there Mike's in just got to get the swell and the netting right good out I'm actually going to stick a crawl bait on now a bigger bait I'm going to try a new bait uh, these made by a company called ES Fishing I don't know about these yet they're, they look fantastic. They are actually AliExpress copies of this is of a Rage Crawl. American bass anglers will know all about those. But they do smell, and that one's not so bad. A little sweet. And they are towed by a really good grass angler. I mean, he could have been winding me up. <laughs> we'll find out. That. Um, Actually, bite the tail off, make it a bit smaller. That ras like sweet face. So, this is a very salty bait. I can tell you that from tasting it. But you see, I've just taken off the back two segments of that to make that bait a bit smaller. Um, it's what we call a swimming coil, so it's got its flappers, it's got edges to this crawl so it will, as I lift it up and down this these flappers these swimming claws will flap around and up and down I had a little move I'll work the lure along this edge in front of me for the moment if I don't get a bite this chuck I'm going to go back to my confidence bait see if I get bites again Still got the uh, new crawl bait on. Looks good in the water. Sweetish smell to it. I don't think it's an off-putting smell for the fish, but they say all your soft plastics will generally catch wrasse, but uh, some will catch you more for certain. And it's finding those baits. I don't make a secret of the baits I use, so if you watch enough of my videos, it shows you all the baits that I use. I'll put some links in the description um, and give you that shortcut. Yeah. With a ras bait, what you're looking for is something that's tough enough to, to last a few fish because ras have beautiful teeth and they have a habit of biting off, smashing up soft plastics. You will lose soft plastics. So you want a bait that's not 
easily chopped but you don't want too hard a bait that the hook won't you can't set the hook through the plastic all right i'm trying sharper little pulls with this bait now two or three it's just it's a new bait oh there's a hit i just had a tap on it then far side of this gully so i'll wait nothing all right that's long enough hop hop wait again but yeah definitely a, a tap there didn't feel like a big fish again a smaller fish there seem to be a lot of smaller fish about at the moment we're, we're hoping for the tide being higher that we might connect with some bigger ones Jesus, you'll go for it, mate, aren't you? Another little one. New bait, that. I'm quite chuffed because I bought a few. Right, it's only a little fish. Beautiful colours on this. So I'm going to hand line it because I'm over the water. Uh, have a look at the stunning colours on the belly and that and that fish. And that took a crawl bait. Or is the water's just here? We'll just release that fish nicely there. We're looking for the right cadence and what i mean by that is you know how quickly you know that might work another day that might work with a very long pause and then the same again whereas today it seems to be a you know somewhere in between it's a feel thing the colder the water the longer your pauses you'll generally need Oh yeah, he's a nice one. Oh, he's got me in a snag. Jesus, that's a good fish. Snagged. Yeah, he's the wrong side of the rock. See if he'll swim out. Hit it early too, but it just... Right where you didn't want to get a bite. <laughs> There's one again. Come on. Go on. Yeah. Oh, he's off. I'm having one of those days. Yeah, got one. Come on, up you come. Only a little guy. Just another little golden one. Come on. Only a little fish, but you can't hand line them up this far. So that's where the long neck comes in handy. When you're lifting, just lift. Once it's in the net, just lift, pull back up towards you. Don't lift straight up, especially if it's a big fish. Less chance of ruining your uh, your net there. No. Right. Oh, a little fish. Ugh.
have a little golden brown one. There we go. So we're a long ways up. So you're going to release the fish with the net. Be careful of yourself as you near the water's edge. Check out for waves. I'm going to find this far up, but as you can see, I've got a 6.9 meters long this net, and that's just long enough to release this fish. I think we can get him. There he goes. Come out of the net. <laughs> 